ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Colexco City Council, Colexco Redevelopment Successor Agency, Colexco Financing Authority. Our regular meeting agenda for Wednesday, fe February 5th, 2020, is approximately 540. And uh, City Clerk, will you do the honors of roll call, please? Mayor Hodge. Here. Mayor Pretend Romero is absent. Councilmember Ariola Fernandez is absent. Councilmember Ryzen. Here. Councilmember Pacheco. Here. We have a quorum, Mayor. Okay, for closed session agenda. Any public comments at this time? No, sir. No. All right, then, since there aren't Mr. any. Mr. Mayor, do have, we do need to add yes. two. Um, at this time, we need to add two items as urgency items to closed session. Okay. The, and what will be um, titled n item number three is exposure to litigation case. It'll government code 54956.9D2 and um, E1. Additionally, we're going to add as number four to closed session of uh, the case of Lorena Lopez Aguilar, the city of Calexico, Juan Carlos Gonzalez, and Santo Tomas. Uh, case number ECU 001168. And we'll be adding that um, case to closed session as item number four. Thank you. Okay, very good. All right, thank you. Then let's, uh, if there aren't any further questions, let's adjourn to closed session. Carlos, you didn't need a motion. Oh, oh that's right. Thank you, Gabby. Jeez, I'm acting like Donald Trump. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Thank you, Gabby. Is there, is there a motion? Make a motion to accept items three and four to our closed session items. Yes. Is there a second? Second. Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Thank you, Miss Gabby. That's why you're sitting there, Gabby. You, Gabby. That's why you're there, Gabby. I know where like, we were ready to take down. off. Yeah. You guys like, need to do this. <laughs> sorry. Thank you. No. no. Gabby, don't say you're sorry. Keep us on. Our ready to date, sir. Okay, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Colexco City Council, Colexco Redevelopment Successor Agency. Colexco Financing Authority. This is our regular session agenda, and it's approximately 6.37. Uh, City Clerk, roll call, please. Mayor Hodge. Here. Mayor Bridget Romero is absent. Councilmember Ariola Fernandez is absent. Councilmember Ryzen. Here. Councilmember Pacheco. Here. We have a quorum, sir. All right, thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, will you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I will lead you. Hand over heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, and liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Remain standing. Our mission statement is to death. Together, we pledge to provide effective and efficient services in a courteous and respectful manner to improve the quality of life for all in our unique border community. Viva Colexico. And we have invocation, do we not, City Clerk? Yes. Uh, and it is um, Pastor. by Pastor Frank Sosuerta, Christ Community Church. Is that correct? That's correct. Hi, how are you? Good bless, to see bless, you, bless. Well, Let us pray. Father in heaven, first of all, and God, we are reminded as the uh, sun begins to go down, God, and this day begins to unwind, we are reminded of your faithfulness. And God, my prayer would be today, Lord God, that the authority that governs this city, God, would be dependent upon you uh, for wisdom, uh, for guidance, Lord God. And I pray the same for the citizens of Calexico, God, that we would all look to you for wisdom. God, may we all live our lives on the rock that is Christ Jesus, our Lord. We ask your blessing upon this meeting tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. You may be seated. <coughs> City Attorney, closed session announcements. Thank you, Thank you Mayor. City Council, many closed session on items one through four. Um, and we did add two urgency items to closed session. We did receive direction on these items, but no reportable actions were taken. All right, thank you. Uh, approval of the agenda. Is there a motion? Mr. Mayor. Yes, I'm sorry. 
we do have an urgency item for the open session part of the agenda. It's an item that came to the attention after the posting of the agenda and one that we need to take action before the next council meeting. The item uh, we would recommend be added as item number 17 to the agenda. Yes. And it's a resolution to approve the joint application of an infill inf infrastructure grant with uh, Chelsea Development Corporation. Do we need to vote on that? We would need a, a separate um, motion, uh, first, second, with a 3-0 vote to add the item to the to agenda. Add it. Okay, we can do that now? Correct. Okay, very good. Is there a motion to add uh, the uh, resolution to approve the joint application of the inf infill infrastructure grant? So move. Second? Se second. All right, thank you. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, no, nope. motion carries. Okay, very good. And at this point, we'd, we'd approve the agenda as amended. All right, now we'll approve the agenda. All right, is there a, a motion to approve <coughs> the agenda for I'll tonight's I'll make a motion session? to approve the agenda. I'll second that. Very good. Thank you, gentlemen. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> motion carries. We have announcements. City Clerk. These proceedings may be viewed on the City of Calexico website at www.calexico.ca.gov the Friday following the City Council meeting. Mayor Hodge will have community office hours to hear the concerns of the citizens the fourth Tuesday of the month from 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. at City Hall in the City Manager's Conference Room, 608 Heber Avenue in Calexico. Thank you. Now on to presentations. We have a proclamation. <laughs> Declaring the week of February 7th to the 14th, 2020, as National Marriage Week. So I will begin. And here we are. Whereas marriage binds couples together in a network of affection, mutual aid, and mutual obligation, commits fathers to their children, and connects children to a wider network of welcoming kin. I'm sorry. To Ken, marriage thus is the outward visible sign of a couple's desire to create a lasting life and provide the bastion ongoing of support necessary for the growth of healthy children and a healthy family. And whereas mounting scientific evidence confirms that the best environment for children to flourish is in being raised by parents in healthy marriages rather than unhealthy marriages or by a single or cohabitating parents. And these children demonstrate less behavior problems in school, are less likely to be a victim of physical or sexual abuse, less likely to abuse drugs and alcohol, less likely to commit delinquent behaviors, have a better relationship with their mothers and fathers, are less likely to be sexually active, become pregnant as a teenager or impregnate someone, are less likely to contract STDs, have a decreased chance of divorcing when they get married, and are less likely to be raised in poverty, and? Whereas healthy marriages protect adults as well as children, mothers as well as fathers, and research indicates that women in healthy relationships experience more physical and emotional health, more wealth, are less likely to be victims of domestic violence, sexual assault, or any other violent crimes, less likely to attempt or commit suicide, have decreased risks of drugs or alcohol use, and less likely to contract STDs, and are likely to remain or end up in poverty, and more likely to have better relationships with their children and and whereas research also indicates that men in healthy marriages experienced are more likely to live longer, be physically and emotionally healthier, wealthier, have increased ability of employment, high wages, increased risk of drug and alcohol abuse, have better relationship with their children, more satisfying relationship with their spouse, are less likely to attempt or commit suicide, and... Or as we acknowledge the importance of lasting healthy marriage to be the well-being of children, therefore, to the future of our community, we recognize that our community benefits from having a high percentage of, of couples in a healthy relationships. 
We note the following. Higher rates of physicality, healthy citizens. Higher rates of emotionality, healthy citizens. Higher rates of educated citizens, lower domestic violent rates. Lower crime statistics, lower teenage pregnancy rates, lower rates of juvenile delinquency. Higher rates of home ownership, higher property values, and overall decreased need for social services. Recent advances in research have helped us identify the behaviors and skills necessary for a healthy relationship. Furthermore, we now have proven methods for teaching these skills and behaviors and... Now, therefore, be it resolved that in consideration of all these important values of our community, I, Bill Hodge, Mayor, proclaim the week of February 7th through February 14th, 2020, as National Marriage Week in the city of Calexico. In witness whereof, I hereunto affix my signature and official seal of the city of Calexico on this fifth day of February 2020. And so with, with honor, I'd like to ask Miss Adriana Hernandez to come forward, and I'll be very happy to give this to you. It's time for public comments and public appearances. City Clerk. This is the time for the public to address the City Council on any item not appearing on the agenda that is within the subject matter jurisdiction of the City Council. The Mayor will recognize you and when you come to the microphone, please state your name and place of residence for the record. While members of the public are encouraged to participate, it is unlawful to disturb or delay the Council meeting with personal or slanderous remarks. If the item you wish to comment on is on consent item, please comment now. The City Council is prohibited by state law from taking action or discussing items not included on the printed agenda. If the item you wish to comment on is on the public portion of the agenda, we will take your comment when we get to the item on the agenda. Please direct your questions and comments to the City Council. And I'd just like to repeat, if the item, remember ladies and gentlemen, you wish to comment on is a consent item, please do it during, during this uh, time of the meeting. Okay, City Clerk, do we have any public comments? Martha Cota? Martha, oh, Leticia. Martha Leticia Cota. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Let, Ma, well, now you know my first name. Martha Leticia Aldana Cota. Um, I am here with two, I'm going to speak to the first one. As you all know, I was here a while back constantly requesting, yes, previous, I guess, I guess the only two board members, that, I mean two council <laughs> members that were here was both Mr. Hodge and Mr. Pacheco. And it was um, uh, about the water rates, about the in increasing of the water rates. At that time, I guess the community was informed that there <laughs> Water bills were going to go down. Well, that has not been the case. And I know it may be water under the bridge to a certain degree because the path we're all paying and helping the city get out of the red. But what's really frustrating and upsetting is the fact that I received a second letter stating that our water is not up to standards. What the heck is up with that? And you know what? The majority of us here may be able to afford bottled water, but the majority of our community members cannot. And the only reason why a lot of the community members that I represent, and mostly seniors, that are not here because of the weather. I almost felt 
compelled to stay home under my covers because it's so mm -hmm. cold. But you know what, guys? Something needs to be done because this is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. And I know, and, and this is nothing personal, and I'm aware that, yes, the city needed the money or needs the money, but the community should not be held accountable for mismanagement of previous funds. So it happened. But now, what's going on? Why is it that we're getting these letters? We got the second one that our water is not up at par, or it's contaminated, or however you want to call it, but the bottom line, something's wrong. And that's my concern and my issue. And like I said, there's many people that were going to be here today, mostly senior citizens. They're not here because of the weather, but I'm their voice. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Cote. Public comment, the other one too. They both, it's two different issues. That's why I submitted two different ones. Oh. Do I just, the other one is the cats. Okay, go ahead. The other one is a cat issue. Come on. <laughs> and I know, I know, and I know, I know there's a fine that people who feed the feral cats are going to be fine, but give me a break. You barely have officers or you barely have staff to do what needs to be done on a daily basis. That doesn't work. And I'm still waiting for, an, for a meeting with city officials to address some of the issues concerning the cats and another issue that I had. So that was my other comment. Thank you. Thank you. Next. That's all for public comments. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. City Council comments and reports of meetings attended. Um, Councilman Risen, do you have any? I have no comments at this moment, Mayor. Okay. Councilman Pacheco. It just had one. We went to, I was at the uh, chamber meeting and we, they were discussing possibilities of having and moving up the uh, tequila tasting in uh, and also the mariachi, but more to come. It's still, uh, we're still meeting. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I have just one. I just, there seems to be confusion and we need a lot of work on our commissions without a doubt. Uh, but remember commissions are an advisory committee, uh, commission. And they're advisory in nature and they report to the city council. Now, the city council can make recommendations for further research in a specific issue if the council does uh, see fit. It is also important that you uh, stay in your jurisdiction as a commissioner on whatever commission you're on. And I strongly want to advocate or Im impress upon all commissioners or the chairmen of the commissions that you should each be doing a five-year master plan, a vision of, of what you want to succeed at and what you want to focus on. Plus, uh, the administration and staff continue to, to realize the commissioner's strong dedication and hard work. I, I want them to continue to realize that and not to dismiss them but keep their, the mutual respect that we have. That's all I have on future agenda items. Thank you. And now we move on to city manager's report. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'd like to address the water rate issue. <laughs> um, water, water rates are separate from the general fund. The general fund is not connected to the water rates in any way, shape, or form. In fact, it's illegal for the city to use water rates for general fund purposes. So us getting back in the black has nothing to do whatsoever with water rates. And as ter in terms of the TTHM issue, we, it's, it's a very common issue. Every city and district has dealt with this. We do have a project in the, in the upcoming project on the Eastside Reservoir to address 
the TTHM issue. We're just in the middle of the design is already completed. We're ready to start uh, probably going to bid on that project once the state approves it. So we are addressing the TTHM issue. And the water is drinkable, and we have like eight months to, to fix, fix it, the issue. TTHMs are not good, obviously, but it TTHMs are dangerous when you consume 20 years worth of water. It's it, They're in such minute concentrations, parts per billion, that they don't pose an immediate threat. They pose a threat over a long period of time. So we're already addressing the issue. Uh, they, these usually happens during the warmer months when we get algae forming in the water and when the chlorine uh, comes in contact with organic material, it forms these TTHMs. And that's when uh, we, we start to have problems because it's usually in the summertime months. So. Uh, we don't think we'll have that issue in the next couple of quarters because of the, 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 the weather, as was stated before. So that's where we stand. That's all. Uh, unless our assistant okay. Yes, Mr. Um, Figueroa. Two things that I want to uh, communicate to the council and the community. Um, we were called upon by Cali PA to attend uh, a budget hearing at the state capitol on March 5th regarding the New River monies that were announced as part of the um, state's budget for fiscal year 2020-2021. Uh, um, we appreciate the invitation um, and we will continue uh, to take advantage of those forums and express um, what our community has made clear for us here. Um, so we, we will be um, uh, testifying and, and, and sharing the story of what we have in our hands here in Calexico. Um, the second item that I want to share is that um, at the last city council meeting, um, uh, uh, I believe a council member and a member of the public uh, requested information regarding what we are doing with our downtown action plan and some of the actions that our business improvement district is taking. So we put together a white paper um, that carefully outlines everything uh, that has occurred with regards to our downtown action plan in terms of the actions that the council has taken and the monies that have been secured to fund some of those elements. Um, we began to distribute that with council um, and uh, with our bid. However, uh, we're gonna take it a step further and we're going to be providing that information also here in the rotunda. Um, and we were going to encourage pretty much, um, in this case, our council and any commissioner uh, to share it with the rest of the community as well. So we can all be on the same page of what we're doing. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, yes. Okay. All right. We have closed public comments, but I will allow it. It's, it's under your comments. As well. Under my comments? Okay, very good. Go right ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My name is Olivia Valenzuela, and I just happen to be chair of the Personnel Commission. And I am not in agreement with you that us chairs have to come up with a five plan as to what we need to do. Because I may not be here tomorrow or next year or, or, or whatever, I think that falls under the city staff or under you guys and the city staff because I, I as a private citizen I feel that I do enough for the city attending those commission meetings listening to the employees and the attorneys without having to go home and there we go upon me anymore that falls upon me you guys have to Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Okay. Moving forward. Uh, consent agenda items from 4 to 12. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda items? Make a motion to accept items 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. All right. Very good. Is there a second? I'll second that. 
All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries for agen consent agenda items. Moving on to discussion and potential action items. Number 13, adopt a res. Excuse me, let me go to the actual resolution. The subject is adopt a resolution approving recordation of final map subdivision number 058-756-036 and 058-756-037 Meadows East Unit 1 and we have before us two options tonight to discuss debate and take action on but uh, we'd like some background on this please can you yes uh, yeah but we've got our uh, planning consultant here, but uh, this this item has has been to the planning commission, and the planning commission recommended to only allow three units, uh, three lots, and the the map shows four. I think we have the project proponent here to speak, uh, as well as our planning consultant. This has been ongoing for two meetings now. So okay, very good. Welcome. Um, good evening, uh, Mayor and Councilman. Um, in, uh, in general public so what you have before us is um, uh, two options right the one the Planning Commission uh, amended and recommended approval of and one that originally the Planning Division recommended so option a um, it's one of your resolutions um, the Planning Commission amended the application and recommended approval of a subdivision of approximately two parcels uh, to divide them into three parcels. Parcels one, two, and three. And those parcels would be approximately 100, uh, 0.186 acres in size. And option B is um, the option presented and recommended for approval by the planning uh, division. Um, and that one would subdivide two parcels uh, into four parcels. One, two, and three are approximately 0.152 acres in size. Parcel 4 is approximately 0.139 acres in size. Parcel 4 would be deed restricted as affordable housing for moderate income households. So the existing land use behind the project, if you look to um, the project site right now, it's currently vacant residential land, is zoned R1, low density residential. So it's anywhere from one to five units per acre. Uh, on the north is single family use. Again, uh, low density residential. To the south, uh, low density residential. Um, to the east, low density residential. And to the west, low density residential. So it's basically surrounded by R1. There are some parcels to the south um, east, I believe. There's one parcel that is also vacant as well. So there's, those are the two options presented to council, option A and option B. Very good. Thank you. Any questions? But, but Chris, are, are, are we sticking with what the Planning Commission wanted, was, which was just three? Yes, sir. That's what the Planning Commission is recommending. Yes. And, and, if, and if it would please you, Mr. Mayor, I've got the project proponent would like yes. to speak on this matter. Absolutely. Thank you. 
splits up into four lots. If you look at the map, it's about 235, well, it is 235 feet across, which means across the four lots to get to a width of 60 feet, you're only shy five feet among all four lots, or uh, one and a quarter feet per lot. So I think one option would be for this council to go back to what the original, original request was, which was divide these into four uh, 80, 58 and three quarter foot lots or any uh, amount therein, because as long as you're dividing it into four the way we're proposing, we exceed the 6,000 lot or 6,000 square foot lot requirement. It's only the width of the lot that becomes the issue. However, if the council is not inclined to do that, and would like to kill two birds with one stone, uh, so to speak, and uh, bring in a, a, a permitted unit under the moderate housing element of your general plan, then my client is willing to do that uh, and, and allow for a deed restriction on the property. Uh, I'd like to point out that in September, uh, excuse me, uh, August 8th of 2019, my client submitted the application for this property to be divided into Type he was not the owner, so it was submitted in conjunction with the owner with whom he was an escrow to purchase the property. Uh, on September 10th, and this is from a timeline that was in the last uh, city council agenda packet. I don't know if it was in this one. Uh, and so I assume this was provided by uh, the planning department, but I don't know that for sure. Staff can speak to that. But on September 10th, my client was informed without solicitation that the planning department had determined that this was the type of request that could be done administratively and would not need to go to the planning commission or would it need to go to the city council and that that decision had been arrived at in conjunction with the city attorney. Thereafter, on September 24th, 14 days later, my client closed escrow after again being told that a final map would be recorded and purchased this property. Then on September, excuse me, on November 5th, uh, he's informed my clients conform, informed that after consultation with the municipal code that it was now believed that it had to go to the planning commission at a special meeting on uh, December 18th, at which point my client, I think and rightfully so, raised to the planning commission that, hey, under the subdivision map act, you've got 50 days to make a decision. Otherwise, uh, the act is or request is deemed approved and you're way outside of that. And so long before I ever came involved, uh, if we were outside of that time, potentially November 5th, uh, we're way further uh, beyond that now when it, before it comes to the city council. So I think that's the, the first, or perhaps the second argument is that uh, because this was set on so long under the uh, Subdivision Map Act, it can be deemed approved as it were. Uh, I think the first argument is that my client relied, perhaps to his own detriment, on representations from staff on the purchase of this property, that it was essentially a done deal, the four lots would happen, and now here we are. Uh, so then when it finally does go to the planning commission, there are members of, of uh, the community that come forward. I understand that there's some very nice houses there that express some concerns as the plan was submitted. My client uh, voluntarily, voluntarily changed his original request for four unrestricted lots to three with one moderate income uh, restriction lot at the request of, of commission staff. And so they proposed to the commission that they approve it. This is option B. Uh, but because of the outcry from uh, the public or for whatever other reasons that uh, they may have had, they decided not to and that's what brings us here tonight. So um, I'd like to, if I could, just read you something very briefly. This is from your 2015 general plan update. And with respect to residential land use goals, it says it's to provide an adequate mix of low, medium, and high density, density residential land use to house seniors, families, of all economic sectors. And it goes on through the objectives and policies to say that we want to provide housing to all economic segments of our community. And then in the very next section of your general plan update, it refers to infill. And it says the objective of the city is to encourage infill and adjacent new development to provide for the efficient use of existing infrastructure, avoid leapfrog new development, and reduce impacts to agriculture. And I think that uh, all of the council, and certainly uh, uh, your legal representative, is well aware that we have seen over the last couple of years, especially effective January 1 of this year, a torrent of legislation that has come out of Sacramento uh, 
uh, and that in some large ways and some small ways has reduced the discretion of city councils to make sure that as much uh, development is becoming available to try and address the housing crisis. And uh, one of those is the Housing Crisis Act of 2019, which I believe arguably could apply here. I think the only missing element would be a 45-year deed restriction on my client's property. Uh, my client is willing to agree to a 45-year moderate uh, uh, income restriction on the property. Um, and I believe if we did fall under the auspices of that law, it would take us back to where we originally started, which is the approval of a project that meets all those requirements is, a, is essentially a ministerial function and requires the planning uh, group to essentially say, yes, you check the boxes, so this project should be approved and move forward as requested. So I think on all of those grounds uh, and in, in the interest of advancing uh, affordable housing in the community, is this a ton of affordable housing? No, it's not. But based on the most recent numbers I saw online, you're only at about 13% of uh, hitting your target uh, here in the city of Calexico when it comes to moderate housing. Some of the new legislation sets thresholds, uh, the lowest of which is being 50% and are not hitting 50% of your target. And the law begins to peel away from city's discretion uh, as they become lower and lower under those thresholds. So I think this moves you in the right direction and also allows you to approve a project that's going to throw some affordable housing in there in a good area and do some infill uh, to get some density in a place where there's not currently anything being, being built. Um, so we want to work with you. I'm not here tonight as an adversary. I'm just here to highlight information that I hope will inform the decision that you make. Um, and I know each of you come at this from a place of trying to do what's best for your community. And I think that uh, there are a lot of reasons why this project is in Calexico's interest. So with that, I'll, I'll submit it to your consideration. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions at this time? I Council? have another speaker. Do we have another speaker? Roberto I'm Gutierrez. Sorry. Um, council, uh, citizens, um, we have a CCNR's integrity of subdivision that we have to follow. And in the planning committee, we have a broker and we also have um, a contractor, a licensed contractor okay, on the planning commission. And they were part of the group who voted against that after hearing the citizens. And I went out and I talked to some of our citizens. Not everybody could make it here today, but we have at least four or five of us here, okay? Now, and the ones who came today and at the planning commission, they're on Margarita, they're on the other side of the slots, and they were against it. Everybody I talked to, about four or five people that were home, they're against it, okay? And it's supposed to be until 2040 where you have to respect that. Now, if I'm... The gentleman here does, did not know those rules. It's not the citizen's fault. It's the city's fault through him, okay? So the planning commission approved three lots, not four. Um, impact on agriculture, arguably no crime no crisis we don't have a housing crisis we're going to have six houses built on coal road okay we, we we're not like san francisco we're not like los angeles three hundred thousand dollars is not uh, the type of housing that you know people who can't afford it that are you know they're not going to pay 300 they're going to go some other place not there, okay? So the citizens that we have living there are not, okay, uh, in agreement that you should, okay, put in that, uh, so many lots when they're supposed to be till 2040, the CCNR's integrity of subdivision. So we have to respect that. Okay, it's, it's not our fault, the citizens that live there who bought there and are still paying there because of mistake 
or somebody didn't know, knowingly made that mistake, it's not our fault. So that's why I came last time. And uh, at that time, the city council said, no, there's going to be three, not four. So um, please respect uh, the voters. Okay. I don't want to have to run for city council, not that I'm telling you, <laughs> you know. Okay. So please listen to us. We voted for you guys. He can vote for you. He wasn't here when you were elected. He's trying to do something good. I like what he's doing, but you can't just push something through just because you feel it's right. More people that feel it's not right than you, the, the owners, and the lawyer who came tonight. He doesn't know our community. There's 600 subdivisions and people could go there and buy, I mean, 600 houses could be built. Mr. Gutierrez, please make your last remark, okay. sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Alex Peroni. Honorable Mayor. Honorable City Council, yeah, this is very simple, okay? Uh, when a subdivision is gonna open up in Calexico, they put their plan, their proposal, and as they develop, there's something that's called CCNRs. CCNRs are regulations, rules, to protect the subdivision, and you protect with the integrity of the subdivision. So uh, that's one thing that I would look at very closely, the integrity of the subdivision. Not come and change it. It needs to be developed the way it was proposed, and it needs to continue, because it's the integrity of that community and of that subdivision. Uh, that's the first thing that I would look at. The second thing, them because you have a very well balanced uh, commission. You have people that are licensed uh, contractors, you have a broker in real estate, uh, people from education. So they know the community and they know the regulations and they know uh, the developments in our city. They vote it to keep it free. They vote it for free. And the question I you know, the community that's here tonight, uh, they trust you, they voted for you. I'm pro development, and I believe everybody here is pro development because we want to see Calexico go. And we want to see our residential components also being filled. You know, in the uh, next years, we have subdivisions that will be building more than 600 homes, moderate, high, they'll address every component the state requires. So let's stick to the facts, let's <coughs> stick to what we said, uh, what the city approved when this subdivision was uh, developed. And the CCNRs, we have to keep to them because if we don't, you know, next thing we'll know, they'll, they'll sell tacos in, the, in one corner. Maybe a little uh, also in, in the other corner, like we see that happens in other cities. And so we need to keep the integrity. And uh, I'm very, uh, very, uh, uh, it's a mystery. And I, I would like to know how something like this would have been uh, decided uh, without taking it to the council and how your city attorney that's what they're claiming said uh, was okayed. So th we have to look at that. So those are my points, and thank you, City Council. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Peroni. Next. That's it. Would you like to? May I make one additional comment? Sure, you can. I 
both speakers mentioned the CCNRs, and I, I uh, agree with Mr. Peroni that if somebody wanted to put in a convenience store on this corner lot, for instance, it would not be allowable under the CCNRs. The CCNRs consist of five, five pages. With respect to the residential lots, and I'd encourage you to ask your lawyer about this. I don't continue to expect you to take my word for it, but my reading of it, all it says is that the residential lots shall be used for residential purposes. It does not say that residential lots shall continue to be X amount of specified feet or the houses shall be painted this color. They're not those types of CCNRs. But finally, uh, and I don't know if this was the recent legislation because I've read a lot of it or something that was on the books prior, but I do recall and again rely on your own counsel for this uh, information. Uh, but in running across something that said to the extent that CCNRs are in conflict uh, with the opportunity for low to moderate income housing, uh, that the CCNRs cannot be used as a vehicle by which to avoid that type of designation. Uh, but again, I'll leave that to your counsel. Even if these CCNRs were applicable, they wouldn't uh, stop this uh, from happening. So, thank you. <laughs> okay. You, we didn't uh, say anything about the moderate, or we, we just talked about the integrity of the community. And you know, there's five pages like you stated. And there's, uh, you can see that he never said that there was one factual. An attorney, when he knows there's something written in black, will state it, and his argument is based on that. And he can't say it tonight. Make it quick, please. And we have a broker on the planning committee who was part of the Meadows Division, okay? She, she sold me my home. And she knows, okay, the the, um, the rules, and what it's until 2040. You have to respect it, and it, you can't bring in all kinds of different sizes. All the lots are the same size. The home to the properties in front, okay, Mr. Mosio lives. There's three lots, and there's not five houses there built, right? So you have that, they're respecting that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gutierrez. Is any more public comments, city clerk? Okay, just to remind everybody here, this is a very, this has to be a serious consideration. Remember what our city attorney says, we're three today, so it has to be approved. It has to be a three zero vote. And uh, are there any comments or concerns by the city council? I'm going to go with a recommendation that the planning commission met and the voice of the citizens that lived in that Margarita area and, and, and um, they had concerns about having overpopulated uh, housing there. But uh, I'm going to go for the, uh, for the three. Okay, that's option A. A Councilman Rice. My question, the uh, only question I have is the, uh, there was a law stated that, that they can build four homes. Is that, is that what the question was? They can build four homes before and now they can't? Um, what was the, uh, that Mr. Childers said? That there's a, uh, there was a, uh, a plan before he bought the property to that he can make it into four homes? And then they changed it to three. Is that, is that what happened? So the the original application mm -hmm. um, upon the, that the applicant sent in was for four four lots. Uh, the planning commission, when they heard the item, amended it, uh, re amended their resolution um, to approve uh, three lots. Okay. Well, I'm looking at the map over here, and uh, I see that there is three homes behind behind this lot, so uh, I'm going to go with the recommendation on the, uh, on the planning commission on this one to keep it three, keep it three lots. Okay, remember we still have to vote on this. Appreciate your, your opinions on it. Uh, very, Mr. Child's arguments were, were very strong and well taken, but uh, I am a proponent of affordable housing, but not in the middle of a higher residential area, uh, concerned about housing values going down and so forth. So uh, 
I'm also going to vote for option A, and it reads, the Planning Commission amended the application and recommended approval of subdivision, approximately subdivide two parcels, each of which are approximately 288 and 272 acres of land, respectively, in order to create three parcels. Parcel one, two, and three are approximately uh, 186 acres in size. That's option A, but remember we have option B. So let's take option A first. Is there a motion to approve option A? Make a motion to accept option A as as written. As written. Okay. As Is there read. a second? I'll second it. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Opposed. All right. The motion carries unanimously. So there's no reason to go to option B. All right. Thank you. Number agenda item number 14. <coughs> Resolution Resolution to approve the recordation of final map subdivision number 2011-06 Calexico Mega Park. Could we have some background on that, please? Absolutely, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I do want to make a comment on, on this item. Uh, this item was possibly one of the first things that I had to deal with back in September of 2017. Um, when I was brought on to the city uh, in, into my uh, role as, as Director of Community and Economic Development. Uh, this project stood out right away just because of uh, the entitlements um, that it carried, uh, full-blown environmental impact report, um, among many other things that um, made it uh, extremely attractive. Um, we got in contact uh, with the Mega Park team representation. representation. Um, we began to have a dialogue. Uh, fast forward, um, I'm happy to share that some of you that have deep roots in the city have heard about this project for a long time now. Um, what I do want to share with you is that what's being proposed now is an updated uh, development that suits the needs of the city. Um, it's no secret that the north part of the city has and will be developed. It's needed. Um, a project of this magnitude could bring many opportunities to the city. Um, I'm happy also to share that um, as a result of uh, this picking up more traction, a group of professionals were brought uh, to create a cohesive team um, that has fast-tracked a lot of what you have here in front of you today that our planning consultant will get into but um, I, I, I do want to share that it's to be commended and it's a reflection of what we are looking for the city um, in present time and in the future um, it is uh, comparable to our actions with downtown and everything that we're undertaking working with partner agencies at the local, state, and federal level. Um, it, it's part of the new breed of, of, of bringing new life to the city. Um, so with that, Mayor, I'm going to pass it on to um, our in-house consultant. All right, very good. Hi, uh, good evening again. Uh, so basically what this final map subdivision would do, it would take two uh, large parcels. Um, the first is known as 059-010-062. It's 41.14 acres in size. And parcel two, 059-010-063, which is approximately 114.27 uh, acres. And it would divide them into 16 additional, additional parcels. So, and totaling 18. And this is the first phase of sort of a, a master plan of how they're going to develop um, this entire site. So uh, the project has undergone extensive environmental review uh, environmental impact reports compliant with regulations set forth in uh, CEQA, California Environmental Quality Act. So um, this is a very long history uh, in our city. It's in 2000, August 18, 2009, um, the e final EIR and zone change and, and the general plan amendment was approved by city council. Um, 
and then it was requested that it decertify. There was a, a change in plan. And back in March 3rd, 2015, uh, they held a public hearing uh, for uh, a unanimously approved various resolutions. Uh, again, for the EIR, uh, general plan amendment, zone change, two conditional use permits, an attentive subdivision map, and a development uh, review permit. Uh, so you flash forward to 2016, um, they reviewed the zoning ordinance uh, text amendment, the Planning Commission did, and um, there was a new zone change adopted through uh, two ordinances approved by City Council on October 12th, uh, 2016. Uh, those were ordinances 1173 and 1174. And again, same year, uh, they were adopted. June. Late June of 2019, the planning division began to work with Mega Parks team in order to complete uh, the requested final map subdivision. Because right now it's under a tentative map, and that is set to expire relatively soon. So uh, October 23rd, the project review committee met with the developer to discuss their plans. Um, they're in attendance here, uh, and began working with the team in the city's engineering division on preparing the final map subdivision in accordance with the city standards. And so the planning division certified that the final map subdivision is in substantial compliance with the tentative map. And uh, this is formerly known as Mega Park uh, 2. It's now known as Mega Park Unit 1 because they're going to develop it Increase. in phases. So on January 27th, the final, map subdiv uh, the final subdivision map was completed to the satisfaction of the city engineer and the planning division. And so, again, this has undergone extensive review. Um, so currently, right now, um, it's vacant land. And what, what this would do, it, was, it would take these two large parcels and it would break them up into uh, 16 additional parcels, totaling 18 new parcels would be created. And so we've worked with public works, uh, engineering, fire, police, um, on, on making sure that this project um, is, is well designed. Um, it's in conformance and compliance with all of our codes and ordinances. Um, and so the planning division recommends that you approve this final map subdivision. It's been a long time coming, Mr. Figueroa. Yeah. Yes. And we're going to develop that south end first. Forward. That's great. Is there any public comments, City Clerk? Okay. I just wanted to congratulate. Yes, yeah, it's been a long time coming. We've been hearing for, about the mega park forever. And in addition, thank you for the clarification that the water will soon be, issue will be resolved. But the reason why I mentioned about the monies was because in the past money had been borrowed from the waters, water plant or the water budget. Almost we paid off. Yet, but Almost. I saw it in the presentation. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments on this item? You have to fall asleep, uh, slip, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, uh, council. Any concerns or questions? No. All right. Yeah, make a motion that we approve uh, the recordation, recordation final map subdivision number 2011-06, and known I, as a Calexico <laughs> Mega Park. Very good. Is I'll, there a I'll second? Sec I'll second it. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. All right. The motion carries. And uh, I'd like to commend Mr. Figueroa and Mr. Belasco for your hard work and all the staff that's been involved. Definitely a long time coming, and this will be a real plus for the city of Calexico. Moving on to agenda item number 15. Thank you. Yes. Good job, guys. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Keep up the good work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It takes two.
<laughs> okay. All right, thank you. Uh, all right, moving on to item number 15, approval of professional services agreement with Fire Prevention Services Incorporated for weed and rubbish nuisance abatement services. Any background on this, uh, City Manager? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, we have a number of properties in, in the city limits that uh, are that have some problems in this regard. We don't have the resources to go after that those property owners, even though we and we just passed a new nuisance uh, ordinance recently. We did once on one property and it ended up costing the city about fifty thousand dollars we just we don't have the resources to do it and so we've been in contact with this company they do the work from a to z turnkey and it doesn't cost the city any money they they finance the project from start to finish and so we're requesting an agreement with uh, fire P prevention services for this company to do the work we have specifically a couple of properties in mind yes. that we continually get uh, complaints about which we have not been able to address because of funding and this will take care of that they will take yeah. care of that this will be the number the, the property that you're thinking of will be the number one uh, list item on the list Mr. yes Dale, is it up is it up to this company to be out and about and looking at and looking for this type of nuisance problem and they contact us and we get the ball rolling yes we will have a minimal uh, contribution to these things but staff time police time code enforcement time uh, we it will be a combination we can either contact them or they will be doing the the routes themselves so yeah very good okay uh, mr councilman rise okay very good so uh is there a motion to approve a professional services agreement with Fire Prevention Services Incorporated for weed and rubbish nuisance abatement services? Is there a motion? I'll make the motion that we approve it. All right. Second? Second. All right. Very good. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to item number 16. And... This is a public hearing, correct? Yes. So I will open up the public hearing at approximately. Do you want to start? Help me out there, Mr. Uh, oh, Councilman. Uh, 7 738. All right. Some background on this before we ask the public to come forward. Uh, let me read the subject first, though. Introduction and first reading by title only of ordinance number dash, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Calexico, California, amending section 17.11.1020 of chapter 17.11, title 17 in parentheses, zoning of the Calexico Municipal Code, adding one parcel to the cannabis overlay zone. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Uh, this, this item has come before the Planning Commission, but um, back up a little bit, it was started with the um, subcommittee, the Cannabis Subcommittee, and uh, went to the Planning Commission originally, and it was uh, originally died on the, f on the floor, uh, came back to the subcommittee, and was recommended to go back to the Planning Commission. The city went ahead and at did the appropriate advertisements, uh, and uh, then it went, uh, the Planning Commission did approve the item. What this is, is there's a parcel that is adjacent to the, and, and right next to right the, the existing cannabis overlay zone. And right. for whatever reason, was excluded when the city made the, the drawing and what would, what would be included, what would not be included, was it was excluded for whatever reason. Uh, there are benefits to um, including this in the zone for the city because there are existing warehouses that can be used immediately for this purpose and that would it, that would make immediate revenue for the city's coffers um, I there could be there could be some cons and we can open it up to the public for those comments but there are definitely some benefits for uh, in this regard so 
Chris, do you have anything else there? Um, so the proposed expansion would add um, to the cannabis overlay zone to include 120 West Cole Boulevard, uh, otherwise known as APN 058-020-019. Currently, the site maintains two large metal shell buildings. Uh, one is approximately um, 25,000 square feet, and the other one is approximately 53,800 square feet. It would add just over 79,000 square feet of existing warehouse space to the cannabis overlay zone. <coughs> okay, thank you. Uh, council members, any comments or questions before we ask the public to come forward? No? No, I, no, I, I, okay. I think um, it should have been added in the first place. Yes. Basically, it's just, I don't know if they thought the restaurant was going to cause a problem, but there's a restaurant on the corner. But I don't see anything that's going to be a negative impact to this. It's not near anything. On the contrary, it's a positive. Yeah. yeah. Positive. For various reasons, it's on the line adjacent to the overlay zone. It's contiguous the with the The warehouses are up and about. The structure is there. It'll only take a little more infrastructure. And so we can see in a very short period of time revenue coming in. Uh, all right. Let me open up to the public. It's approximately... 739 those anyone like to come forward in Tina favor Campillo? or against um, I think you know Property has actually been warehouse facility since the 80s. Um, it's, we're suffering from a decline in business due to the fact that the east uh, border opening took that part of our business to that side of the place. And not being in Canada, we're suffering because there is a demand for the small warehouse. So we think we would get uh, enough business to stay in business if we're added to the zone. So you're, besides the benefits to the city that Mr. Dale mentioned, there's also benefit to keeping a, a business in business that's been in business since the 80s, um, rather than go bankrupt. Um, additionally, as you know, a lot of these projects are time to get power and water right away. And our units all have power and water. It's ready to go. You could get revenue to the city immediately. And so I hope you'll approve tonight. It's going to benefit the city. It's going to benefit the budding businesses, no pun intended, that small businesses trying to get started. And also it's going to benefit a business that's been a longstanding business in Calexico since the 80s. So I hope you'll approve. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Roberto Gutierrez. Mr. Gutierrez. Yes, uh, do we need more? <laughs> okay. Um, I have some studies. I was here a couple of weeks ago, but I'd like to uh, turn it over in a few seconds. Um, according to the National Institute on Drug Abuse, marijuana use can have a number of negative effects on the user's daily life. It can also affect what social and cognitive abilities leading to problems with memory, slowed reactions, anxiety, panic, as well as social and interpersonal deficits. In, in um, Canada, there was uh, studies, and I'll turn it over, uh, 68 that were given over so that they could see what effects. Okay. 62 were negative. Okay. In Canada, they were one of the leading proponents and started. It was, it was negative. Um, if we look at Las Vegas, okay, sure, we all like to go, and, <coughs> but you know what? It's a, it's a, I, I've been going, I used to go 30 years ago, and it was the highest rate of the divorce. The housewives were losing their homes, and the husband didn't even know. Okay? Mexicali. The retired teachers, okay. 
they're losing their money because they go there. Okay. And other people. So it's, it's something that we don't need more of. Okay. We need to have less of it because it is. You, it, last time here also when I was going to present it, I didn't come forward talking to the chief. He's been involved in Northern California and all the problems it, it would cause. Okay. So I don't think we need more. And it's, as an educator, you know, I want to help my students. Okay. They're the future. But it shows that there's problems. Okay. They, they will not be thinking clearly. Cognitive effects. And it leads to more crime and more car accidents. And it's all in here. Is um, cannabis the same thing as marijuana? Does anybody know? We're, cannabis we're not able to respond. Is what? Mr. Guterres, we're not able to respond. So okay. it's a rhetorical well, question. Cannabis is the plant. Marijuana is the dried leaves. So I didn't know that, but I wanted to prepare about a week ago, I mean two weeks ago when I was here. But we don't know that much about it. And we only go by why people said, yeah, we want more taxes, we want more money, but it's going to cost us more in the long run. Please okay? make your last remark, sir. All right. So please, you know, think about it. And if it goes past here, but no more. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank Guterres. You, Mr. Anybody else uh, for public comments? No, Anyone else want to come forward? Pro or con? All right, very good. We will close this public hearing at approximately 7.44. And now uh, we will take it to a vote. All right, and that is adding one parcel to the cannabis overlay zone at the address that was, that was set. Okay. Mr. Uh, Mayor, may I? Yes. I just want to... Uh, Mr. Gutierrez, that it's gonna it's not gonna be a retail outlet. It's gonna be for manufacturing and distributing. But it's not gonna be retail. So if we don't do it here, they're gonna do it in El Centro, they're gonna get the taxes up there. At least we get the taxes down here. But it's gonna happen. Okay. I make a motion that we approve this. Second. I'll second it. Oh, I thought you were Yeah, finally. <laughs> okay. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Mayor, uh, Board of City Council of yes. Alexico, California, amending section 17.11-1020 of the chapter 17.11, title 17, zoning of the Alexico Municipal Code, adding one parcel to the cannabis overlay zone. Thank you. Okay, very good. Motion carries unanimously. Now moving on to our item that was added, and we approved it to be added, and the subject for this particular item number 17 states resolution to approve the joint application of the infill infrastructure grant background please city uh manager any background on this one or okay very good mr velasco hi so um on october 30th 2019 uh, the state of california department of housing and community development um issued a notice of funding availability uh, for its infrastructure infill grant. So um, in essence, uh, what, uh, what this grant would do is it would accelerate the production of housing and associated infrastructure improvements um, through the IIG grant. So every, uh, everybody gets uh, sort of a subsidy to develop affordable housing. And I believe these are 64 proposed uh, housing units that would be deed restricted as affordable. Uh, it would also help us um, reach our, our RENA goals, which I know yes. you're on the RENA committee. Uh, so what this resolution would do is would allow the city of Calexico uh, to jointly apply uh, with uh, Chelsea. Chelsea. Uh, they're here in the, in the chambers today um, for money. And uh, so they would get money to help build their housing, and we would get money to, for infrastructure improvements. And this particular area is uh, known as the Remington Project. So it's south of 98. Right now it's vacant uh, with trees and 
weeds and everything you guys could think of. Um, and so what this would do is it would pay for infrastructure to connect, uh, I believe it's Sheridan Street, uh, and help uh, widen Highway 98. Um, so I can, the applicant can go more into more details to the specific infrastructure improvements as they've been preparing uh, for this grant application. Okay. Um, would Chelsea like to come forward and make a comment or further explain? <coughs> All right, thank you very much. Uh, my name is David Davis. I work for Chelsea Investment. Uh, as many of you are aware, we've, uh, this is where Jim Smith started his business, was in Imperial County, and he constantly brags to everyone how, you know, we love Calexico and El Centro and Brawley, and, mm -hmm. and we have a lot of successful projects here. One we're just about ready to finish off of uh, Frontera, or Las Praderas project, so um, we're, we're very successful there. The, the infill infrastructure application, um, we cannot exceed $3.5 million. And as you are aware, the Remington project uh, had about, I don't know, 274 condos or something like that. So the city appropriately went through its entitlement process and the conditions of approval have Sheraton going through and McKinley and the widening of Highway 98. So those improvements, um, we estimate, come up to about almost $3.2 million. And so generally, it would be very difficult for that project to move forward. I think there's currently some sort of lien contract that they have to do before the first, you know, they have, all those roads need to be built before the first occupancy can take place. So this would take care of that. It would free up the property. We have the property in, in escrow to build out phases of affordable housing. The first phase is 62 units, as Chris mentioned. And so um, in addition to the improvements, there's also a, a desiltation basin on the site that requires, you know, planting and, and needs to be pumped out to the existing system. So again, I think this is a beautiful program because it'll free up this property that otherwise would not, it would never pencil, basically. So. Uh, with that being said, we would have uh, one, two, and three bedroom units on this. It would be 30 to 60 AMI. And in addition to that, we would have the California tax credits and HCD and MHP, which are acronyms for other funding sources. And, and I apologize for coming in on the city on such a short notice, but you know this is the time of year when all these applications have to be submitted by February 18th. Our, everyone in our office, their hair's on fire trying to figure these things out. Um, so here we are, you know, we want to walk hand in hand with the city and build some more projects. Very good. Any green areas proposed yes. in this project? Yes, some of this money will pay for landscaping. There's landscaping along the streets. Um, Anything with a small we, park or something like that? Well, we have a community, you know, each one of our projects has its own community center and open space. Um, no, no, I mean, I mean I'm, for I'm kids a, to play. I'm not aware of any uh, public parks within the subdivision that would be available, other than the attention basin itself, which is a green space. Basin. <laughs> Welcome to Calexico. Well, what price range are you talking about for the homes? <laughs> for the housing? Yes. Yeah. Well, it's a it's a for rent, so our All right. okay. our rents are fixed by the California tax credits, and so these are all subsidized. And so it's not a market rate at all. It's, it's, not, okay. it's not for sale. So I believe it was 30 to 60% of area median income. Yeah. So um, nobody would pay more than, or it would be restricted to people who make 30 to 60% of uh, Imperial County uh, area median income. We will take okay. Yeah. For example, we just recently did a senior project in San Diego County. And so if a person's income was, you know, retiree had, $1,200 a month, for example, then all they had to do was pay, I think it was $400 a month, and then we just make that pencil through our performance. So. That's very good. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, I, my estimation, this is the way affordable housing should take place, or the process, and uh, I'm happy to hear that this is a real, that this is a definite possibility for affordable housing. 
Is there a motion for this resolution to approve the joint application of the infield infrastructure grant? Is there a motion? Well, be before that, I just want to yes. make make sure that we try to try to make uh, uh, the area more green and have a place for uh, the neighbors and and the kids to go somewhere. They'd have to go to a, a school site, and they're all locked up. There's no actual park. They'd have to go way down there to the um, Los school. Otros. There's nothing close by, and Los Otros the retention basin also. Yeah, well, that's just my concern. More more green area. If we could include that, can that be looked at as? Yes. Yeah, so so we have not received. We have not uh, processed their uh, development uh, review application as of yet. Uh, we are waiting on, on council action, mm -hmm. and so what we would do is we would. Uh, we would look at it and um, take it to the project review committee and um, get input from all the department heads. And uh, I believe in the, the draft site plan that we did receive that there is an, a green area for the residents um, to, to uh, you know, a recreation area. Um, in terms of a public park, I do not think that's a part of this. Well. Although certainly, um, we could we could look at options in terms of uh, uh, what kind of infrastructure uh, could be, uh, funds could be used to to um, pay for more green areas. I, I think Councilman Pacheco has a very valid concern. Definitely, I would like to see and look at that seriously. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I so just want to say I'm in full agreement with that. Is this is the first step, and then this will make the project viable. We'll get additional funding, and we'll continue to work with Chris develop a site plan for the entire site and hopefully you can get a park in there somewhere. Okay. Make a motion to, uh, oh, is it good to go? Put on it resolution to approve the joint application of the infill infrastructure grant. Is there a second? I'll second it. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Now on to, I believe that's it. On to future agenda items. Councilman Risen, do you have any future agenda items? Uh, I'll see. I'll see Dale in his office about that. Okay. Very good. <laughs> Councilman Pacheco, any future uh, agenda items? No. Uh, you, uh, we've got taxi, new taxi locations, and oh, the, oh, we've striped. Other. We've striped the uh, I'll go back to you. Second Street. Uh, Going into the port of entry, an area for our mm -hmm. emergency uh, vehicles to make have an access to the port. It's working out really well, by the way. I, I, I drove it, and, and people are following the rules. It's It's been great so far. Uh, last time I, I, I made a, uh, I was concerned about the traffic delays at the border, so we need to get, we need to get our state uh, contacts and the federal to come on down. I know it's a, it's not a win-win situation because there's just no funding for putting more boots on the borders. It doesn't, it doesn't, it, it doesn't help us out that they're going to extend six more lanes if they're not going to hire anybody. So it doesn't, you know, we're, we're going to expand the, the port, but I'm sorry, we've got the same or less than to yeah. maintain the port. So it, it, it it's, it's a, uh, it's kind of a defeatist we, thing we, to we do. spoke we spoke with uh with the uh, supervisor Escobar yes. and the four of us are going to are going to take two supervisors yeah, but, as but, well as two yeah but i'm thinking uh, we need to make some contacts with the, the with the sacramento and and federal yeah yes for help it's not, yeah, that's yeah i um taxis uh they, they want to raise their uh rates the rates, uh, can we put that on the next agenda? Yeah, we already had legal look at that and prepare something that will okay, be on the next agenda. Right, okay. I also want to comment that night there's a nice vigil on the a visual on the alley. There's a there's a what you're not supposed <laughs> to do. There's a visual there. <laughs> oh boy, I can just imagine. There's a visual. No not much <laughs> wordage, yeah. but there's the a visual makes there's it. a visual makes it you're, oh, you're not supposed to do this in the alley. It's, it's gonna be all over town. We'll get, we'll get some more coming up. All right, very good. I have just a couple of strong reminders on two previous future agenda items. One, the city council needs to still have 
a goals and objective workshop formulating a mutual vision so that we can prioritize and know where we are going. Second, again, I strongly recommend that we take action on creating a five-year plan and properly, and properly lighting the streets in many dark areas and painting the lanes. All for visibility and public safety. Let's not wait until we have a tragic accident. That's it. Any other desires or hopes? No. Can we, uh, can we get together with uh, Caltrans and get that medium uh, taken out? That's still, uh, Avenue? Yeah. Yeah, their, their project was delayed. It was supposed to be happening next month, and now it will be next year. But we do need to have that conversation with them because there was some technical issues that they brought up, but it seemed like we well, could maybe address we, them. Maybe we can... Uh, we can run a sledgehammer. We, we, we yeah, can we, do it. Do our guys. Maybe we can scrape well, it off. Well, that is an option if we submit an encroachment permit, but they take a year to process or so. so pot potentially. That's Caltrans. <laughs> All right, very good. Uh, Make a motion is to there adjourn. a motion to adjourn? So move. Second. Second. All right. This meeting is adjourned. Thank, Thank you, you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.